I'm Suzanne Barron, and I'm an interventional cardiologist at Mass General Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. Calcified coronary artery disease is rising in prevalence. We see it more in older patients, and certainly that's who's coming into our cath labs. Uh, we know with coronary artery calcification is associated with increased procedural complexity, uh, as well as poor short and long-term outcomes. Um, there are a lot of devices that we have to treat coronary artery calcification, but the reality is, is that while there's a lot of observational data available, there is very limited randomized controlled trial data comparing the efficacy as well as the safety of these devices. The Shortcut trial is an investigator-initiated study uh, that involved 413 patients uh, with uh, calcified coronary artery disease who are undergoing PCI. Patients were enrolled in the study and randomized to receive either intravascular lithotripsy or cutting balloon angioplasty uh, for calcium modification. They were then subsequently treated with PCI with a drug-eluting stent. The primary outcome was minimal stent area at the site of maximal uh, calcification as adjudicated by an IVIS core lab. We did stratify uh, enrollment in the study based on whether or not a patient was going to get rotational atherectomy as an adjunct for calcium modification as well. So this really allowed us to see uh, how the IVL and the cutting balloon uh, efficacy compared in patients who received only balloon-based strategies versus patients who received atherectomy and a balloon-based strategy as well. We also chose to look at several key secondary endpoints. Um, certainly, we want to make sure that this is safe, so we looked at several safety endpoints. We want to make sure that this is uh, an effective device that you can actually deliver, so we looked at, at measures of strategy success. And then we also looked at procedural cost because there's significant cost differences between these devices. So the study found that cutting balloon angioplasty was non-inferior to intravascular lithotripsy in terms of the primary endpoint. Um, which was uh, minimal stent area at the site of maximal calcification. Um, we did uh, do reflex uh, testing to look for superiority, and we found no difference between the two groups. With regards to several key secondary endpoints that we looked at, there was no difference in measures of stent expansion or calcium fractures between the two groups. Furthermore, we found that adverse events were very similar. There was no evidence of increased dissection or perforation associated with cutting balloon angioplasty when compared to intravascular lithotripsy. Where we did see a difference was in terms of procedural cost. We found that patients treated in the IVL arm had a, an overall procedural cost that was about $3,600 greater then the, that was associated with cutting balloon angioplasty. And when we broke down where those costs were derived from, it was generally derived mostly from the cost of the randomized device. We were actually also able, because we had stratified the, the trial into a rotational atherectomy and a non-rotational atherectomy arm, we were able to actually look at how the devices compared within those two separate arms as well. In the rotational atherectomy arm, the results were very similar to the overall study cohort in that there was a uh, cutting balloon was non-inferior to intravascular lithotripsy in terms of the primary endpoint and all other secondary endpoints as well, although again, procedural cost was higher in the IVL arm. In the non-planned atherectomy arm, though, that we did find a difference in that cutting balloon was found to be was not found to meet non-inferiority when compared to intravascular lithotripsy. Interestingly, when we looked at other measures of calcium modification, like stent expansion or number or presence of calcium fractures, we didn't find any difference between them, which was a little bit surprising. Um, and so we started to kind of think, why might this be? And when you think about it, minimal stent area as a measure is limited by the reference vessel size. So for example, you can't have a minimal stent area that's 10 if your reference vessel size is two, um, whereas measures like stent expansion is normalized for the reference vessel size. So if there was a difference between the reference vessel sizes just by chance between the two arms, that might explain a little bit about what we observed. Um, when we looked at that, we did see there was a strong trend, albeit non-significant, to smaller vessels being enrolled into the cutting balloon uh, arm within that non-plan atherectomy arm. 
And when we re-ran the primary endpoint and adjusted it for uh, reference vessel size, we saw that the mean difference in minimal stent area dropped by 50%. So what that suggests to me is, is that there likely was some play of chance that reference vessel size affected those outcomes. Um, but again, that remains somewhat exploratory. The take-home message uh, from the shortcut trial is that cutting balloon angioplasty is non-inferior to intravascular lithotripsy for the treatment of calcified coronary artery lesions. We didn't see any differences in other measures of calcium modification. We saw that both uh, that both uh, devices are associated with similar some, uh, safety profiles, but we did see that procedural cost was higher with intravascular lithotripsy. When you think about how folks may incorporate this information into their into their practice, I think what I take away from this is that we know that these are both good devices for modifying calcium. We have these extra tools in our toolbox to do that now. And that's great. I think there does, it's very okay to go ahead and reach for the cutting balloon to use as your initial, um, your initial calcium modification tool because it is, does come at a lower cost. You don't lose anything by trying that. But intravascular lithotripsy is certainly something that you can use afterwards. It's cutting balloon doesn't work. Or you can use that up front. They're both great devices. And I think that ends up being a win for, both, for all of our patients. So next steps. Actually, we've got a lot of work to do. Um, really lucky that this uh, trial has generated an incredible data set. Every single patient had a minimum of two IVIS runs, and most patients had three IVIS runs. So we really have a very rich data set to be able to dive in and look at differences in calcium morphology and see if there is any differences in how these devices um, perform with these within different calcium morphologies. We also have a very rich data set with regards to procedural cost and resource utilization, so I anticipate that we'll be doing some deep dives into that as well. So there's certainly more data to come from the shortcut trial.